there out in rebel land welcome to another live and unscripted with your host today jennifer saunders and leah spelt l-i-g-i-a i had to think about that for a second how do you spell yeah yeah anyway so today we are going to do something a little bit different with our live and unscripted and we just want to say first of all thank you for sharing your time with us. We know that time is precious and there's a lots of ways you could be spending it and that you're choosing to share it with us is, it's just incredible. And we say, thank you. I also just realized I did not edit the destination or the description of this. So, um, you are going to get some watercolor. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's still on Tammy. I'll, I'll go in and change that. This is, this is like the, the craziest, most awesomest part of the righteous rebel community is we make mistakes and we own our mistakes and sometimes we get to do it in front of everybody and we just say okay <laughs> we'll we'll correct it when we have a chance to correct it so um we hope today that if you find yourself in that space as well that you just own it you make it mean nothing about you and you move on um so today we're going to talk about a new challenge that we have coming up called Lucky Me. And we're also going to incorporate our 30-day presence with watercolor into, into this live and unscripted. Just, just as a way to keep, uh, keep things easy and smooth and continuous in the, in the rolling process. We are going to start with breathing today. So if you're new to the community, um, live and unscripted is a is a podcast or a it's a podcast that I created a long time ago as a way for me to just have beautiful conversations unscripted with people who most of the time I don't know very well it gave me a chance to just to just kind of model the fact that we meet amazing people all the time and that we can have conversations we can follow inspiration and find all the meat and of, of a person's story and all the yummy nuggets that they have to share with us that add value to our lives, but also to the lived history and experience of, of their life. And so uh, last week's, if you didn't catch it, was with Tammy Gaines, and it was absolutely fabulous. I would encourage you to go and listen to that. You can find it uh, deep inside the LinkedIn. It's on our YouTube. You can also find it on the Righteous Rebel page. And we also house that on therighteousrebels.com. Um, it will also be put in the link. Um, the comments. Thank you. <laughs> Leah's in the waiting room. <laughs> Are you ready to be brought on, Leah? Yes. We'll just bring you on. Um, anyway, so live and unscripted on, on some weeks, you get to hang out with Leah and I like you do today, where we'll just talk about various topics or what we have going on in the Righteous Rebel community that we think is exciting and we really want to share with you and invite you to be a part of it. Um, will Kalita... <laughs> Hi, Kalita. Hey, you guys, Kalita is going to be a guest in like a week. I think next week. You're going to love that one too. Uh, that is a, she is a soul that I just absolutely adore. Um, and again, I don't know super well, but I know well enough. And so here's how we always start. We start with breathing. We start by taking moments to just get present where we can let go of what's already happened in the day. And we can let go of what we think is going to happen in the day. And we can be right here right now with ourselves and with each other where inspiration actually takes place. And so today I was thinking about, I'm gonna open up the journal that we have, this amazing journal that Lee and I created. It was our first project together. It's called My Revelations Journal. And you can order, we'll put that also in the comments. <laughs> Leah, you got that? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so that you know how to get your copy. Um, and I opened up to a page and here's what it said. When you focus on the good, the good increases, which is absolutely perfect because it's what we're going to talk about today and share with you as part of our Lucky Me Challenge. Um, so let's get to that breathing. And today I just, I, I, I'm just going to invite you to 
just breathe a little slower and a little deeper than you usually breathe. Um, notice, take notice of like where you breathe. Do you keep your breathing just kind of up in your chest or do you allow it to go down into your belly? Do you allow it to go like clear down into your hips and your pelvis? And today I'm going to invite you to just really breathe deep. Don't worry about counting or holding. Just take a deep breath and feel what it feels like and just let it out and feel what it feels like. I am going to invite you though to notice that as you do this, what you experience and to see if today you can notice your heartbeat and what that feels like in your chest. Or can you hear the blood rush through your ears? Or can you feel a pulse somewhere in your body? So with that said, uh, we're going to go about 60 seconds. Again, just big, deep breaths, letting your body relax into that, feeling your belly expand and contract. And as you do this, I'm going to invite you to do it with a downward gaze or closed eyes. And we're just going to, I'm not even going to guide you through it today. We're just going to get right into it. So go ahead and take that downward gaze or those closed, those closed eyes and enjoy breathing for a minute. All right, go ahead and finish that up. And when you're ready, feel free to open your eyes. Oh my heck, here's here's what I experienced today. And we would love to hear what you experienced. Um, and you can put those thoughts over on under like this is live on the Righteous Rebels page on Facebook, um, Facebook group. And if you're not a member of that, this is your invitation to head on over and join that group and be a part of the magic that's going on over there. Share, share your own magic. We love, we love learning about you and getting to have what you share as part of what we do. Uh, we need what you have. So head on over and get it done. And you can also put the comments of what you experienced with just pausing for 60 seconds to breathe, to notice your heartbeat. So for me, I'm a wiggler. And when I started, I get excited when I get on here and, and as I started the meditation, not the breathing, the breathing, not the meditation, I was wiggling like I could. And then this really cool thing happened. I'm like, I'm breathing and I felt my mind slow and I felt the wiggle stop. And then I could feel the breath move through my body and just, just a calmness today was, was pretty cool. Um, Leah, how about you? Um, I think before we started, I felt like kind of shaky and just like everything felt really fast. And, and I still feel a little bit of that, but not, not nearly as like fast as it was. So I'm sure if I would continue a little bit more, it would slow down even more. So right. I did, I did notice that shift. So I'm not feeling like that. <laughs> like I gotta go, gotta go. So it's awesome. definitely so important to remember to breathe and we just forget we get so busy and we don't give ourselves time to do stuff like that so i i always appreciate that you start with just breathe and like let's bring all our attention to where what, what we're doing where we are well and i was thinking about Um, Kalita just says, there's been a lot happening, so my anxiety has been high, but focusing my breathing has definitely calmed me down this afternoon. Awesome. Kalita, thank awesome. you for sharing. Yeah. Um, and, and I love that point. And I was just about to say, when you find yourself in moments in, in a day where you're just like, ah, and you feel like you might blow your top or 
just like kind of burst your skin because there's so much going on. If, if you will just take even just the time to slow down, like close your eyes and just slow down your breathing and let it move a little deeper into your belly and into your body. Here, here's the thing is it's not just breathing. When you're doing that, you're, you're changing the state of your presence and of your mind. You're moving from the fight or flight into just kind of a more peaceful state, which actually allows your organs to function as they were designed to function instead of being just on this like high alert, always ready to go and, and never being able to slow down. It also does this amazing thing where slowing down your breathing and pushing it into all the places of your body sends clean oxygen. It nourishes the, the muscles, it nourishes the tissues, it nourishes the brain. we got to have that oxygen and it really requires us to be conscious. Now, yeah, breathing is, we, we just are blessed to get to do it without having to think about it. But there are moments where that breathing and taking in the oxygen and pushing it all, the, like it's not just a slowing down. There are actual physical benefits of breathing. So there's your little nerdy tid, tidfit, tidbit, tidbit, tid, tidfit love for it. the moment. Tidbit. <laughs> tidbit. We love to make up. Words. Words. Yeah. Inventing words is amazing. I love so, it. So Kalita, we really appreciate you sharing. And for anyone else who experiences that, um, just take a moment. I, I love to do, this is coming to mind. I love to do this when I'm driving. I call it tell, tell light meditation. And when I see the tail lights of a car, I actually think, just breathe, just breathe. Even if I'm not in a state that feels tense or uptight, it just reminds me to breathe. And so this is me inviting you to find something in your immediate space, whether it's the clock or maybe it's a, a cup on your desk or it's a pen or something, a picture that when you see it, you place a trigger and you go, hmm. it just automatically gives you that clue to just breathe and just notice what happens so speaking of breathing today we are going to start off with something that makes me feel a little bit like Ugh! and so i'm breathing a little deeper and we're going to give you another installment of presence with watercolor and i am glad that we did breathing beforehand <laughs> and i have no idea what leah has in store for us today and so whoo it's exciting. Okay. That's right. Me too, Jen. It's going to be a surprise for me too. I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love whatever. It, you know what? It's super fun. Um, I really try not to have too much plan for the, the, this watercolor stuff just because it's a practice in just being present and, and allowing yourself to feel into that process without an attachment of what it's going to look like. So that way, when you at the end of it have something that like is appealing to you, you're like, it's, it's a happy little surprise. It's like, oh my gosh, I did that. And um, it's a, an opportunity to play with water. Um, I was thinking about how healing water is and why I love water. Like I'm always thinking, why do I love watercolor so much? And uh, I was thinking about how it can be kind of wild and do its own thing, but at the same time, it can be incredibly forgiving because you can, you can make a hard line somewhere and it doesn't look right. And if you get some water, you can wash that light uh, line out and, and it won't be completely gone. So there's still that remnants that it was there and a reminder of how you want to do it a little bit differently. And um, I mean, like that's the texture and that's the, the beauty of it. It's what brings the humanity in, in the art um, are the quote unquote mistakes. It's, it's the blemishes. It's the things that make it unique and fun. So I, I love that you're bringing that point out that, that the, the blemishes, the blemishes and the mistakes and all of that is the humanity of the art. And it's just the humanity of being human. Like those are the things that make us unique. Those are the things that help us grow. And it's what keeps life exciting even though sometimes it's probably more exciting than we might like, but I, I really appreciate you bringing that piece out and just recognizing that it's not necessarily a mistake and it doesn't have to be corrected per se, but that with a little bit of, of 
thoughtfulness or extra water, like it can be changed and shifted into something else. And, but, and then I, I, as you're talking, I'm thinking of my birthmark and, and all the stuff that this, this beautiful little mark has and, and, and all the torment and all the, like all the things that I've, I've had to come to terms with. Um, this is part of who I am and part of how, how I was me. Sorry, my computer just got a message that it's going to die in a second. So <laughs> let's not um, have that happen. Dying commu computers while we're in presence with watercolor, not not ideal. No, and it, it's funny, like, as a kid, it was a lot darker. And people would say, like, oh, you've got a jam stain on. Like, didn't your mom ever teach you to wipe your mouth? Like, and it would be stuff like that. And, and I used to be super self-conscious. And then my parents thought um, they'll take me for laser treatment to try and get it off. And then that was fun because it, it was like it hurt. And then it would be like bright purple for like two weeks and sometimes scar and all that stuff. And then um, and then it's just been like trying to cover it with the right makeup and all this stuff. And then when I forget, it's like, oh, that's so neat, you know, or, or that's like, why are you covering it up? That's just part of who you are. And like, it's just really embracing those parts of us and, and not looking at it like it doesn't belong um, and that it should look a certain way or it should be a certain way. And that's, that's how I feel about art. And that's how I've come to feel about my birthmark and, and all of, all of that. So um, I'm not, yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's get started here. So all you need to join in for the watercolor today is some watercolor, a paintbrush, some water, and some... I'm thinking I maybe should have changed my water because we weren't prepared to do this. <laughs> we just decided to throw to mix them in together. So eh. yes, yeah, so we did because we were we didn't want to have two live videos. Um, anyways, but you just need watercolor paper. I have mine taped to my board today, um, just so it doesn't bend and bow because I'm going to use my whole sheet today. So you join in with whatever you have. Um, printer paper will not work. I'm full disclaimer, it won't work. And I usually use 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So if you need help with supplies or anything, just put it in the comments and I'm happy to direct you um, and not direct you to the same paints that I directed Jen to that are really <laughs> not great. <laughs> hey, All right, I'm it's a great way to start. It's a great way to start practicing. All right, so uh, for this one, you can just pick two colors that uh, you think will mix well. Uh, so I'm going to go in with yellow and pink because those two colors can bring out a beautiful orange. And I'll show you why that matters to me in a little, in a bit of a moment. So um, we're going to go light at the top. So whatever color you choose, you want to start light. Now I'm going to be doing this. No, I can do it this way. Let's do that. So I'm going to start light at the top. I've gotten some yellow. I washed it a little bit just so it's not so strong. And Wait, you just, just said you were using pink and and yellow. Yellow. And oh, yellow. I'm not oh actually gosh. starting in with my mind. Yellow. I heard in my mind. I heard blue. <laughs> yes, I can see that. <laughs> um, so you want to just go across the top with your lightest color. You can wash it out a little bit more. And I'm going to get you to do a bit of a ridge. It's not a super straight line, a bit of a, a horizon line. Um, there's my giveaway point. It's going to be, we're going to have some mountains in this, this piece today and play around with what that can look like. So it looks pretty washed out. I'm going to go in with a little bit more yellow, but I'm going to keep this more towards where I made the ridges add more of the yellow in those spots and keep the, the top part um, lighter. So a little bit more yellow. And there we are. Uh, I'm going to keep yellow on my brush. And then this is probably blasphemy for people who do this all the time, but this is how I roll. So this is how I'm going to teach it. Uh, I'm just cleaning this off in case you're wondering. Just a little bit of water. I'm going to grab a little bit of my pink. 
you can see there. A little bit of pink. I'm going to do a bit of my yellow and I'm going to mix those two together. So it gives you a bit of a an orange, an orangey. I'm going to do a little bit why more. Do you not, why do you not just use orange? Because I love the combination of pink and yellow because it gives a different flavor of orange. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do it lighter for this one. I'm going to stay away from that edge because it's pretty wet. And in this case, I don't want it to balloon. I'm just going to do it. And again, I don't want a straight line. I'm going to make a bit of a, um, a ridge. Why? What was that? That's a cool color. Right? Yeah. See? I'm pretty much darker, but. Oh, wait. I, I will teach you how to make um, gray. That's a one that doesn't usually come in watercolor sets. So um, learning how to make colors with the colors that you have is, is probably one of my favorite parts um, just because it, it shows you how much how much variety you can have with just some basic colors. Um, it's, it's always a gamble. Like, can I recreate that same color? And then you get into mixing theory, which I glaze over at. So I don't, I just kind of play around with it until I get it right. Um, and I probably do it the long hard way, but I always find a new color that I enjoy along the way and, and I learn something. So I'm keeping it. A that sounds bit. like something we could fit inside of our uh, Lucky Me Challenge. Yes, absolutely. I'm super excited about that, actually. Um, I hear about uh, people say, well, I'm just not lucky and or, you know, everything wrong happens to me. Like, I'm going through that with my, my nine-year-old right now where everything just feels like it's way harder for him and um, he got, <laughs> he hey, got, hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you just do? What did you just mix in the palette there? Oh, sorry. I put more pink. Um, so I, I left that color and then I just put some more pink to darken it a little bit. Okay. Um, depending what kind of, um, how, how dark you want your color or how pink or how orange, uh, okay. you just add some more yellow to it and then it'll make it more orangey. Um, but I don't want it to be the same as the one I just did. So I changed it up a little bit. I'm going to go over overlap a little bit in one spot just so I can. This one's not as wet as the yellow. So I'm less concerned about ballooning here. I mean, if it balloons, it's not a big deal. It's just not the effect I'm going for in this mountain scene that we're creating here. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm going to go with my darkest color along the bottom. So I'm going to go full on pink with much less of the yellow. And then I'm going to just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to go a little bit into the other mountain and really create some fun ridges here. And, and let it be what it's going to be. Just, oh, I know. You tell me that all the time. I know. Just it's going to be what it needs to be. And you're going to learn something along the process. There, to me, there's just never a waste of paper or of time when you're taking the time to do things that are creative. Like you're going to you're always going to learn something in the doing. And it's so important to remember that and not attach ourselves to but it didn't look just like the sample I'm doing. It didn't work out that way or I wanted it to do. Well, try again. It's not going to hurt you to try again. It'll be another little piece of paper. I, I buy this really big book and I cut one sheet of, of the watercolor paper and I cut it into fours because I know these are just, they're all about being playful and experimenting and allowing yourself to just play in it and be in it feel in it like what what feelings jen are you experiencing right now this is a little <laughs> bit different than what we usually do um, um what am i feeling i actually I, i'm i'm actually pretty peaceful pretty just i'm just going with it 
I, I'm liking the colors, how they're turning out. I'm, I'm paying probably more attention to that than I am what's actually happening on the page. Um, and so that, that's good. The colors are cool. I'm just going in, um, in the spots where I left a gap and just with clean water, um, just blending that spot in a little bit. And then if you want to go in with more color um, here, you can let it dry a bit or you can just see what happens when you do it. Um, I recommend seeing what happens when you do it just because it's fun and you get a little surprise. Um, but I would go with a little bit more of a darker color on the ridges to make them pop. You could even do like a totally different color. It depends how much you want them to stand out. Um, or you let it dry and get your sparkle pop pens and, and trace sparkle those ridges. Pop. Yeah. Um, there's lots of fun stuff that you can experiment with, um, with the, the gel pens, um, giving it different effects. Uh, I've seen, I've done patterns in different ones. Um, just have fun with it and see where your, uh, your curiosity takes you in it. What, what do you want it to look like? What could it look like? So I have a little bit of orange I'm going to mix up here. I don't think I'm watching what I'm doing here. Um, and then again, just in the ridges to make them pop a little more. Hot dog. See, this is where my mind starts having a little freak outs. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Tell me, tell me more. Just like the detail-y things of like, ah, how do you get it to look like that? And some some of that kind of stuff and it's my part of it's the paints part of it's my pink or my darkest color just kind of like took on a mind of its own instead of what i wanted it to do <laughs> yes. yes i love the acknowledgement of that it took a mind of it and that's that's the watercolor and you can go in with a wet brush like we were saying you can kind of wash that out a little bit more and and try that that spot again like you could do this as um like i can make a little circle here for the sun and it could be like the bright or you can make it like the moon you know how sometimes we have the moon pop out in the day yes like i love that. that okay how did you say you filled in the white you just took water on a on your yeah. brush and filled in the so I, I rinsed out my brush. Yeah. I rinsed out my brush essentially and then just like went between the two colors and let them mix. Yeah, mine are like, hello, not mixing. They're like, <laughs> forget you, lady. Oh, this is not. There we go. Oh, that looks different on camera. That's okay. I feel the need to put a bit more of a, a dark spot here. And I could even go in with some purple to really darken up that pink or along the bottom or make another, another ridge. Wow. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, I, I don't know where to go from here. So I'm just going. Well, well, let's, let's problem solve. What's going on? Um, inexperience. That's what's going on. That's all. Oh, okay. But what is that? What do you see on your page, Jen? That's what I'm trying to get a, a handle on. Um, is it the blending? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. How, how to m add the color so that it gives the depth, but it doesn't look messy. Mm, this one is pretty messy. It's okay if, it, if it's messy. Um, it didn't quite turn. I'm, I'm painting at an angle, so it's 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 a little more tricky. <laughs> I, I feel like mine looks like um, layers of ice cream versus um, mountainy, <laughs> and that's okay. It can be layers of ice cream, um, and I'm just gonna let that be okay. 
I think it's just different when you're you're trying. It's it's an interesting feeling when it it's not turning out how you want it to. Because I'm experiencing that right now. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. But, what are you What are you experiencing with that lady? Okay. Well, if I'm honest, um, this here, my little water moon sun thing, bled into the other piece. So I'm like, not thrilled with that. These look more like, I get really judgy, I guess. I get really judgy of how it's coming out on the page here. And and I think this goes to the that point of when I have a fin a piece that I'm working on, it's it's working through me. It's not something I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could recreate it, but not often. Like it's just being in that flow and, and allowing allowing it to just guide you through that process, whatever images popped in my head. And, but you know what, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm also learning how do I, how do I share the gift of, of peace and of, and joy of, of creation in a watercolor way? Cause I find it incredibly healing and calming if we don't get into the, it doesn't look like what, what I want it to look like. Because truth is, I could take let it dry, take some pens, and then make it make it fun. Or I could go in with some other colors and like maybe make a mountain top here. I just find it interesting. See, I'm I'm looking at mine and I'm like, Ugh. oh that's but then at the same time I'm like, oh, I could draw some grasses or maybe I could make a cactus or so yeah. like, the mind is is like looking at it like okay so what are some other ways i can take this and and add to it instead of maybe like continuing to mix colors and <laughs> <laughs> build the the layers of mountains you know yeah try and get them to be what i think they should be right and i like that that you're you're thinking what other elements can i put in um to make it look how I want it to look. And, and that's, it could just be a beautiful background that you, you add to, um, and it'll get better as, as you keep going in it. And I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and it still doesn't always look like how I want it to look like. So that's gotta be okay. I'm not going to judge me. I'm going to love me because I'm lucky that I get to do it. So was that a lead in? What we're gonna <laughs> it talk was. About? <laughs> I love that you caught that. Yes, absolutely. For the lucky. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, she just said she's going to love her, which was our last challenge. And then the lucky <laughs> part, which is our new one. So, um, Lee, I'm going to let you just um, talk, talk while I do this. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our new challenge, I'll just lay it out really quickly. Our new challenge is the, uh, the lucky me challenge starts. Oh, today. <laughs> and it's going to go through the 31st. We're only going to record on weekdays. You get the weekends to do what you want with the challenge. You could send us a video of something lucky, like go we'll put it on the Righteous Rebel page and uh, give us your own take on lucky, lucky you. All right, Leah, tell us about it. What we got going on? And she froze, of course. That's hilarious. So <laughs> in our love me challenge, I'm just going to put the paint down in the love me challenge. We took the tenants of righteous rebel and we did a, just a daily quick challenge of all the ways that you can love you. And we had, uh, again, it was a seven day challenge and we used adventure and confidence and courage. She'll be back. Um, uh, Marikai grace, now I'm not remembering them all, but they're all there. And um, just a small challenge each day. And that's that's what we're going to do with this one as well, is that luck isn't this thing that we just sit around and we wait for it to have happen to us. It's not like, you know, you're going to pick up the four-leaf clover and all of a sudden all these magical things are going to happen to you and for you. The reality is life happens for you. It doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. But you've got to take some actions. And so the challenge is more based off of you creating your own luck. 
what is it what is it that you want um how how do you want to adventure how do you want to practice leaving pieces of you everywhere you go and making the world a better place um okay i'm gonna have to find my notebook because i don't have the notes um sorry so by way of let me just do a quick switcheroo here the challenge some of the things that we talked about before we got on here were you know what what how do you define luck we would love to hear about how you use luck in your life like what does it look like does it mean winning the lottery does it mean which by the way in order to win the lottery you had to take an action you had to go and purchase a ticket like get in a vehicle or device moving device bicycle motorcycle whatever and go to a place that actually sells lottery tickets and then you had to walk yourself in you had to pull out your wallet and either talk to an attendant or put your money in a machine you had to get the tickets out maybe you had to scratch it maybe you had to choose numbers i don't know i don't i don't play the lottery it was just something that came to mind but you still had to take an action to be the winner and that's that's what this is about is creating your own luck let me see if i can find the there we go so in the lucky me challenge we're going to talk about adventure we're going to talk about confidence and courage grace hand up trust creativity and marikai which i affectionately call meraki um Let me just check in <laughs> and see what's going on here. You coming back. That's funny. Um, I remember, I remember like being young and looking at the, at the people in my life and thinking, man, they're so lucky. And, and looking at my life at, at some of those points and thinking, I just, I just am not lucky. Like all these things keep happening. And Lee and I were discussing like, how do you, luck is, luck is a mindset. It's like the, the thought out of the journal page. Like you've got to, hold on, we're, we're experiencing a technical difficulty. Hmm. so wild i'm not sure what's going on here uh leah is currently trying to get back on um but i remember we were talking about how do you how do you change the mindset about luck and it's it's where it's it's the saying like where attention goes energy flows what you put energy into you're going to get more of that thing and so Please, please forgive the interruptions. If you're just getting on, Leah somehow got blipped off of the call and is working to get herself back on. So I'm just punting with what we, what we, she and I were talking about before we got on. Um, and I remember when I very first learned that concept of, wait a minute, I get more of what I think about. It was mind blowing for me. Cause I thought, where do I, you're there, Leah. I'm going to stick you back in. So I was just talking about, we were talking about before that um, we get more of what we think about and that luck is, is in that same thing, like where attention goes, energy flows and how we change our mindsets from, from I'm just really unlucky or nothing good happens to me to, oh my gosh, um, show me how good it can get. And so I'm, I was totally intending for you to talk about it. So I've just made up a whole bunch of stuff and uh, I'm going to, now that you have the briefing of where we're at, I'm going to take it. <laughs> okay. So let me, I'm, I'm just trying to catch up here. We we're talking about the lucky me challenge and what luck means to us. Right. Yeah. So and I told them we're going to, yeah, we're going to do it around the, the seven tenants like we did the other one, but then just, okay. I was just talking about, you know, for me, a time in my world when I didn't, think things were lucky. And when I learned that, oh, it's what I put attention into all of all of those things that you and I were talking about before we got on. Okay, perfect. Um, if you're watching, I'd love to know, we'd love to know what you 
you think lucky is and if what what does lucky mean to you uh, i'd just be interested to see the different perspectives of, of what we believe luck is um, i think of a story that i read years ago about um, a farmer who had found a horse and this horse comes it's a wild horse that comes out of nowhere and they catch this horse and the neighbors come and they're like, wow, you are so lucky that you caught this horse, you know, and, and what fortune it brings you. And then the son, the next day, um, he comes and he's like trying to, to tame the horse and he gets bucked off and, and breaks a leg. And then the, the whole community, the, not the whole community, <laughs> the neighbors come over and they say to him, you know what what misfortune you have that you this happened to you and and the farmer's like well maybe we'll see and uh sub subscription comes um the army comes and they're looking for people to come to to war and then uh they see they overlook the son who's got a broken leg and the the neighbor's like oh how lucky you are and then um i think in the story it's a kid's story in the next picture it shows um, the son sitting around watching TV with his leg broken. He's not doing anything productive. And he's like, is it really that lucky that, <laughs> that this all happened? So it's really a, a matter of how we look at this things and how we interpret. Um, there's always a balance as to um, the good parts of, of whatever's happening and, and the not so great parts about what is happening. And it makes me think of something you uh, you and I talk about a lot is, is we get to the things that we get to do and shifting right. that energy from like a have to, and, and just being really conscious of the, the energy that we have around words and, and the attitudes that we carry with them. Like, I mean, um, going back to word energy, how does have to feel versus I get to, there's a, right. an element of excitement and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm blessed because I have the opportunity to do this versus I have and it to. Keeps us, yes. It keeps us in choice. It keeps us in our personal power versus falling into, you know, I have to, meaning someone else is making me do this or I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to like, uh, it's almost like to. a burden that you have to do it. Yes. But, um, I love that you bring up the, uh, the aspect of choice and how important it is to always always feel like we're choosing and gives us a um, agency over how we're we're creating actively creating our lives and when we can approach it from that lens then we feel like we have more choice not only in that moment but in so many other things that we're we're getting to do talk talk a little bit about actively creating like you and i talk about it all the time we've mentioned it here but talk about that because we're always creating so just go a little bit more into that and how that plays into how that plays into luck and this challenge that we're going to present here in just a minute. Um, so that makes me think of, to me, luck is about gratitude and, and really looking at, um, I, I like to catastrophize and to lead with gratitude. Um, I'll share a quick story. You like story. to what? <laughs> catastrophize. <laughs> is that a word? It is now. <laughs> it is now. But okay. So t talk a little bit more about so, that. Um, I'll share with a story. So years ago, I was um, in another city, about 45 minutes from home. I had my three kids in the car. We were coming back from a hospital visit. Uh, it was a checkup or something of my my youngest. He was maybe like two weeks old at the time. And then on our way back, it was like sleeting, icy, all the things. And we went under an, uh, under a bridge and the the truck that I was driving just totally spun out and it was very much a Jesus take the wheel kind of moment where um, I just told my daughter like hold on and we were spinning and spinning and it felt like an eternity um, eventually we stopped facing traffic and my truck is dead like the lights aren't on like nothing is on and I remember once I caught you know collected myself thinking Thank goodness. Um, I had mentioned to my daughter earlier in the day, don't play games on my phone. You never know when you need your phone. <laughs> and I remember thinking, okay, at least we're not in direct traffic. We ended up in the shoulder. We didn't roll. Like I thought of all the ways that that situation could have gone, gone so much worse. We could have hit the bridge. We could have hit any, uh, another person going by. Um, I was super scared because we were facing traffic and it was slippery. So I'm thinking, what if someone else, 
slips like that and and it was dark and uh, it was at nighttime so I couldn't even turn on my lights and I just felt like sitting ducks but being in a place of gratitude and, and feeling truly feeling lucky that it didn't go worse and nobody was hurt and and I had charge on my phone like and I had the ability to get help um, to boost the car or to come pick us up or like I was just super it gives me goosebumps talking about it because it could have gone a lot worse and and sitting in that I I do feel lucky and um, I also feel lucky that that happened because it, it really made me appreciate how how fleeting life can be and in a minute everything can change like your it, goosebumps like <laughs> everything yeah. can change so quickly and we never know when we're going to get those moments so if i'm if i'm hearing you correctly in this in this instant catastrophizing is used as is recognizing a situation that you were in and recognizing all the good things that came out of it and in, instead of the opposite that that was also a possibility so yeah. it it was more catastrophizing was like recognizing those things but giving gratitude for what actually happened like is that what i'm hearing you say catastrophizing yeah, is absolutely and it, it's that whole feeling of like life is happening for me and yes and, you know and, and so i said that before you got on it happens for us not to us yeah and that's i truly felt like that and and just the lessons and my daughter still remembers that she was i think i don't know maybe 10 or 12 at the time and and just how how it just made her appreciate things and look at things a little differently and um because a lot of times we live in our own little worlds and we're doing our things and, and we need moments like that to shake us up and, and bring us back into the current moment and, and appreciate you know what's going on around us so um, that's what that makes me think of is, is how, how can I look at this in a way that like, what's the lesson that I can learn from this? What, what's, what's, you know, the universe or God or whatever you want to call that, that other power, like, what is, what are they trying to tell me right now? What am I, what do I need to pay attention to? Um, what, it's what kind of like looking for thoughts? clues. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looking for clues and, and how can I, live my life differently and, and just see the beauty in all the moments instead of how all the moments feel like it's all stacking up against me. So. I love it. I love it. And so taking all of that and going into lucky me. Yeah. So I think you had mentioned, we're going to base it around the tenets of what, what righteous rebel is all about. Um, yeah, I think I think that sounds like a really great thing to do. <laughs> yeah, and every day uh, there'll be a, every or, uh, weekday there'll be a a little challenge to how you can apply um, luck in in that kind of perspective into your everyday life, and and so you can feel more lucky. So, oh, that's the whole point of you know our minds are are a program, and if we're if we give our minds the the idea that's the whole thing with the Rubik's cube. So my son just got an Rubik's cube and he was super upset that he couldn't figure it out in the first three minutes of opening the package. Like in his mind, he thought he could just do it. And so he felt like self-defeating and I'll never get this and, and this sucks and, and why can't I ever do it? And, and he was like in this whole spiral of, of looking at how everything works against him. And they said to him, if you say those things to yourself, you're, you're going to look for more proof, not only in the Rubik's cube, but you're going to look at it in, you know, you didn't tie your, your shoelace came undone after you had it, you did it for five minutes and that's going to frustrate you and that you forgot something or that you spilt something. And every little thing that happens is going to trigger that feeling of um, everything goes wrong for me. So the whole idea is to, to start shifting our, our perceptions and, and are thinking into how, how is this, how can I empower myself through whatever is happening in, in life? And, and how can I have some tools that, that help me help guide that process of empowering? Cause if, if I'm looking for reasons um, of how I I'm, I'm suck or things are going wrong, the opposite is also true. If we program ourselves to look for for things that what's going right what what can i get excited about what am i grateful for you are going to start noticing more things to be grateful 
for and more things that that can go right and you'll you'll uh, your your program will start looking for that we're looking for ways to prove ourselves right we're always looking for ways to prove ourselves right and as you're talking i'm thinking about you know i i can hear our friends out there saying but yeah i don't i don't know what goes right or i don't know what's really good and and this is this is what i have to say to that like look at your fears what are your fears telling you what how are they how are they speaking so loudly to you and take those and like flip them on flip them on its head and or or look at the things that you don't want in your life right now that was really weird my breath just stopped as i was trying to say that word that was weird um look at the things that you don't want in your world and flip those on its head to things that you do want um when we haven't lived in the mindset of high vibe or uh you know people call it positive thinking or uh looking on the bright side you know whatever you want to call it we call it living alive here at righteous rebels uh sometimes it can be a challenge to be like huh what do i want or what am i grateful for and and taking the mindset that you're currently living in and looking at the things that you don't want because it's super easy to come up with the things you don't want but then just flip that on its head and uh do do the opposite it just as an easy way to start moving into this and and noticing what those fears are and what they're telling you and um as a really simple step of just how to start empowering yourself and shifting your mindset and and know this you're gonna get opportunities to practice this is this is the like the little warning there's another word for, um yeah just know just know you're gonna get opportunities to practice and we would love for you to share those um because in the sharing of that you never know how you're going to lend support to someone else or open a door for someone else to be more authentic or to live alive. And so we really encourage that here, just the vulnerability and the bravery of sharing uh, as you're going through the challenge and the process of, of the uh, little adventures and activities. Awesome. I love it. Boom. <laughs> All right. Well, what are we, what are we going to start with? As far as did we decide? I don't think we did, but action is, is what comes to mind and adventure and action go really well together. I, I actually just wrote down adventure as the first one. So because you just said it too, we're going to start with adventure uh, as our first lucky me challenge opportunity. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about was creating like, what is it that you want to do that's adventurous? And it can be anything. And looking for the options, creating the steps and the way to do that. Um, Leah, what else did we talk about that way? I have like so many things running through my head. <laughs> uh, it's, I think of when I'm, I'm writing or when I'm painting or whatever, um, the quote of opportunity needs to find you working and, and adventure and being lucky reminds me of action, of movement, of doing the things and that we'll find those opportunities to experience luck, lucky moments when we're in the doing of those things and putting ourselves in those places where we can experiment and notice and, and look for lessons that we're, we're, look for the lessons. What can I learn here? What, what What's the opportunity in, in this? Um, I think it reminds me of a story I read about uh, a mom had a flat tire and she missed her appointment and, and she could have gone down this, this whole road of like how everything went wrong. But then she realized it was an opportunity to find out that her, I think it was her, uh, an opportunity to talk that her child was being bullied at school or something like that, that, that would have, it wouldn't have come up that way if that flat tire didn't happen. So again, things are happening for us and, and how, what actions can we take to, to discover some of those lessons? I love it. So when we're talking about adventure, uh, adventure can be a lot of things. Adventure can be like the big grand outdoor adventures. It can be a day hike. It can be, you know, something physical that way. It also can be adventuring into um, a new hobby or adventuring into 
enjoying folding the laundry or doing the dishes. It can adventure is anything that you make it. Uh, learning to make every day an adventure in some way or another. And so that's the challenge is what are what are some of the adventures that you would like to do that you feel hesitant to do for whatever the reason, whether it's fear or you don't think you're allowed or um, you don't feel confident enough. Like what are some of those things and write them down and then start looking at ways that you can create the way to make that happen. What are, what are the steps? Uh, if, if something feels like a roadblock, what's another way to do that and start writing write down all of those things. And again, we would love to see this in the comments or uh, we will also be having at the end of the month, we'll be doing a live Zoom call where you'll have an opportunity to talk about the challenge. It probably won't happen until inside of April. Um, But you get an opportunity to come on live with us and those who are participating and share your experience and to hear the experiences of other people. And our last one was absolutely amazing. It was small and and intimate. And we had some really deep, beautiful, like heart-wrenching, absolutely beautiful conversation just about- Real, just real honest conversation. That was beautiful. So that's- So watch for that as well. And then if you do an adventure, if you actually take the steps to do it, we realize it's not going to happen all today, but we're just asking you to start taking the steps because then we will ask you to do it um, or invite you to take the steps to make that adventure happen. Um, I think that's what I have to say about adventure. Just enjoy it. Enjoy creating your own luck and then celebrating it and, and being grateful for for how it has come your way, how you created it. I, okay, I have to, so define, Jen, what adventure means to you, because I, I feel like that can mean a whole lot of different things. Um, what, what do you mean when you say adventure? Yeah, I, so adventure for me is, again, it can be any, anything from doing the dishes. I had to learn how to make every day an adventure. It's this it can be this like facing the unknown. It can be the excitement of doing an activity of just, oh, following the process, going through the process, wondering what, I mean, you can plan it. You can make all of the plans. You can get all of the gear. You can set the schedules. You can do, you know, get on, have all the right equipment and be out there and shiz is going to happen. And you have to be able to like go with the flow and, and look at the, at the surroundings and what adjustments need to be made. And, oh my gosh, did you see that cute little thing over there? And, oh, can you hear that over there? Like it's noticing all of the things around you. It's using the senses, it's having snacks. And it's it's this way to really connect back to yourself. Again, you can connect back to yourself in a, in a hot, soapy sink of water moving your hand over the dishes and just feeling like being with the experience and in the place that you're actually at. It's being present. It's adventure is a coming home to yourself, but also sharing yourself out to all of the places that, that you get to be in. So adventure can be a lot of things for me. It's, it's an excitement of living alive. I love it. Woo. Woo. Yeah. I love it. Well, Jen, with that, shall we? Well, wait, just a second. Speaking of adventure, we've created some adventures. Yes, absolutely. We have two amazing adventures. One is traveling to greatness and all the different ways that we travel to greatness. And I remember when we were planning that one, how emotional the video making of that one was for me because it was stirring up what what is my greatness. and you know, the little whispers of greatness and, and, you know, the fears that come up when I think of what that could mean. And, you know, uh, it reminds me of a quote of like, we're not afraid of failing. We're afraid of our greatness. And, you know, it's that call, are you going to listen? Are you going to listen to the call that you're, you're being summoned to? And then, and, and I, 
Go ahead. I, what I love about this one too is one, we've created them in some of the most beautiful, like hardly touched by human places so that you really can disconnect from all of this and all of the voices in your head and you can just breathe deeper and come back to yourself. And we've created some opportunities for you to face some of your fears, like bump up against the things that are stopping you from recognizing or stepping into your greatness. And, and we've done it in a way that's safe. And we've teamed up with people who are freaking amazing at what they do. And you're going to get an opportunity to travel in several different ways inside of nature while you learn to travel inside back to your own heart. And, you know, we'll have, we'll have the physical activities. We'll have some um, different experiential activities that are really going to help you learn how to not get rid of fear, but to actually face it and learn how to bring it along for the ride so that it becomes more of a beacon instead of something that holds you back. Uh, that you're scared of or, or that you feel like you right? have to battle. And, and I mean, like the whole transformation process of that is like, how, how do you show up differently when you feel empowered, when you don't feel like you're battling, when you feel like you can just stand in your light and, and just, just own it, just own it all. Right. Um, so giving you tools to just build resilience to some of that and how I love that, how to just own it and to recognize that it's not something to be pushed down or to be ashamed of, but to recognize that you're allowed to own it. Oh, and to just recognize it's a part of, you're allowed that it's just a part of the human experience and that we can use it for our good. And so you're invited to that one. Leah, what's our next one? That was in June, June yes. 7 through 11. Yes. In the and sheep, we Idaho. put the website. The, we already put the website in the comments, right? Not no. I will. I, I think I'll pin the website to both those trips uh, at the top of the Facebook page. But I can okay. also go in and put it in the comments here. Just so if you're curious, you can get an idea of what it's all about. And if you have questions or you want to bring a friend, um, there are thank you incentives for that as well. Absolutely. Um, this uh, is an application process just so you know, um, because we want to maintain safety and the and a high vibe energy that those who really want to invest in themselves can invest in themselves and just have a really incredible experience. So we're looking forward to talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you said vibe because when we were talking about leadership, it, it brought up the idea of what is your leadership vibe and leadership could be, you know, of a community, of an organization, of a team, of a family, uh, as a teacher, if you're breathing, you are a leader and, and it's bringing in those elements of um, what does it take to be a leader? What does the leader look like? And how can you raise your leadership vibe? How can you survive instead of survive? <laughs> how, how are we, what what's the vehicle by which we are are doing these experiential activities and teaching these tools and giving them this experience that you guys it's not just a trip this is freaking amazing experience it's going to bleed into the rest of your life and that that phrase doesn't come from us it comes from one of our amazing guides kate who again you can listen to her live and unscripted on the facebook page it's also mm -hmm. on um the website and she's like, oh my gosh, you want to talk about coming home to yourself? This, this is one of those trips you want to be on. Yeah. And the vehicle for that one is going to be a six day river trip, uh, river rafting trip. Like, can, yeah. you, can you imagine like all the things I'm just, I'm so excited for that one. Um, it's not nature it's, immersive. Yeah. Nature immersive learning. I. Uh, it, you're going to come away with tools with a whole new level of confidence and just being and stepping. You're going to come that. away with a, with a tribe. You're going to come away with people who understand what you've just been through and experienced. And we're also going to teach you how to transition because you won't be the same. You will not be the same person who stepped foot in that raft as a person who steps foot out of it to go home. And so we're gonna assist you in transitioning uh, back into real life 
and to recognize that you actually just lived real life for the last six days and how to put that into the world of everyday living uh, in a way that keeps you connected to self, keeps you connected to your community and allows you to peacefully make that transition. Love it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> very, very. I can't wait. And again, that that's a, uh, it's an application process. Really, it's just a phone call and, and a, a chat with Leah and I, because we want to make sure that Again, that the vibe and the energy stays authentic and true and protected. Yeah. Protected, I guess, is is a would be a good word. So Absolutely. this is me saying you're allowed, you're allowed to invest in yourself and to recognize your greatness and your leadership and come join us. Come join us and bring a friend. <laughs> bring a friend or two. <laughs> All right. That's it makes me think of the team when you said that, like it would be a great team building experience. Ab absolutely. We talked, we've talked about that with uh, Kate as, as part of, of what we're doing. There will be opportunities to practice all of that kind of stuff and maybe learn it. Definitely not. Maybe learn it in a different way of really how to show up for yourself first and then for the people who, are on your team or the people that you lead. So thanks yeah. for bringing that up. Perfect. Well, great. Shall we try? Well, we did a lot today. We did. Okay. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for sharing you with us and your time. And next week we have Kalita Jones as our guest on live and unscripted. I can't wait uh, to introduce this amazing, beautiful soul to you. And until then, be bold, oh. be brave, be a rebel. <laughs> we'll see you soon. <laughs>